The discovery of split genes and RNA splicing were quite a surprise, since all clues from studying bacteria had indicated that genes for proteins were just a string of code words or codons that corresponded exactly to the string of amino acids that the gene encoded. The first clue that something might be amiss came from studies of cloned globin genes. Reticulocytes are the precursors to the red blood cells of mammals. They make mostly hemoglobin. At some point, they lose their nuclei and stop making hemoglobin, becoming the familiar flattened red blood cell. When reticulocyte RNA extracts were mixed with cloned globin genes that had been heated to denature the DNA, the RNA was able to hydrogen bond to the DNA, forming RNA-DNA hybrids because of complementary base pairing. By the time of this experiment, it was possible to visualize nucleic acids in the electron microscope and to distinguish double and single-stranded lengths of nucleic acid. Here's how the technique, called R-looping, revealed the existence of so-called split genes. Cloned globin gene DNA was denatured. The extracted globin mRNA, shown in red here, was added. When the temperature was lowered again, some of the RNA strands competed with DNA to form H-bonds with complementary strands of DNA. This drawing illustrates the expectation that the globin RNA molecules should bind complementary or antisense strands of DNA in the solution of cloned globin genes and thereby displace the sense strand. The sequence of the sense strand is essentially the same sequence as in the mRNA except for thymines instead of uracils. RNA-DNA hybrids did form, but not quite as expected. Here's an electron micrograph of the RNA-DNA hybrid structures that actually did form. The thinner or lighter tracks here are interpreted as single-stranded nucleic acid, and the darker tracks then must be double-stranded nucleic acid. But the double-stranded loop, number three here, seems out of place. Here's the explanation. The lighter tracks are indeed single-stranded DNA that were displaced when the mRNA that was added to the cloned gene DNA formed H-bonds with its complementary strands. The dark double-stranded loop, the unexpected bit here, seems to be in the middle of the coding region of the DNA, the part that can form an RNA-DNA hybrid. This big dark loop of double-stranded DNA was interpreted to be non-coding DNA, DNA neither of whose strands was complementary to any part of the mRNA. So it was DNA that interrupted the coding sequence, thereby splitting the gene. So we can conclude that the region of the gene that becomes mRNA must be split into coding and non-coding regions of DNA, and that the non-coding region is not present in a mature messenger RNA. Most eukaryotic genes are split, are composed of what we now call introns and exons.